Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders, an initiative by World Development Corporation. I'm Sunny Pancholi, anchor at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry titans to share their experiences, thoughts, ideas, and best practices in order to inspire one another and future leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings acquired by these industry leaders. We also hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Leaders interviews, we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone by identifying, nurturing, and using the trade secrets that are proven success formulas for many. And this is what we aim for with this sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such industry titan on FaceTime with leaders with us today, Dr. Jogendra Nath Sahu. He has professional experience spanning nearly four decades in the oil and gas exploration and production industry. His core competencies encompass a wide range of expertise, including basin analysis, petroleum system evaluation, project management, team development and strategic planning. Additionally, he possesses a deep understanding of data analysis, gold prospecting, and the evaluation of exploration and producing assets. Currently, he is working as advisor to Assam Company India Limited, supporting oil, condensate, and gas production from the Mguri onshore field in Assam, India. Welcome to FaceTime with Leaders, Mr. Sao. So to begin with, could you let our viewers know in brief about your career journey so far? Yeah, uh, uh, I passed out my master in geology and then uh, I joined the National Oil Company, ONGC, which is a premier organization in India engaged in exploration, development and production of oil and gas in India. And uh, I, I, during this period, I worked in different basins of India, uh, like I worked in the West Bengal Basin, then uh, Kaveri Basin, East Coast Kaveri Basin, Krishna Godavari Basin, and Northeast Assam Arakan Basin, as well as the Kambi Basin, the West Coast. West Coast. And, do, and I actually, I stayed nearly 11 years in the company, and during this period, I, my foundation in oil and exploration uh, was made. And the, my seniors were the mentors for understanding the hydrocarbon, how the hydrocarbon accumulation takes place in nature, where to go for exploration, uh, and uh, what are the possible risks associated with the subsurface. Because the oil and gas occur in the subsurface at a, a depth greater than one kilometer to five kilometers. So you cannot see the subsurface. Uh, so you have to use some indirect method to understand what is there inside. So like we do in the, in the medical science, we take X-ray, we take ultrasound, so that we assess what is there inside the body of different organs. Same way, we also, uh, in oil industry, we take a seismic survey. Uh, seismic survey is the sending of sound waves at the surface by uh, creating a sound by dynamite or vibrosis, and that sound moves downward. And when there is variation of density from one layer to another layer, the sound, when the sound waves reaches to the surface of the earth, the timing is recorded. So this process, we get, uh, there are uh, different methods how to condition after collecting the data, the, uh, we take it to the computer, we analyze the data, and uh, we get the like X-ray type picture in the subsurface of the earth. And besides that, we also use gravity and magnetic uh, survey. Gravity is the, earth crust, when you go from one place to another in the earth crust, there is variation of the density of the rock. The variation of density, if there is some anomaly, 
animal, that means there is some other thing is taking that place. Suppose it is a rock of uniform composition where the density should be say two, two or 2.5 gram per cc. If the, we find the density is reduced to two, then we suspect there is something which is reducing the density of the rock. So that means the density of the rock is reduced means there is a lighter material inside the rock. The lighter material may be water, may be oil, may be gas. So this is, uh, uh, then we go to the magnetic. Similar way, the magnetic property also changes. And uh, this, uh, <clears throat> Then uh, we also use the satellite data. So the, the satellite data, it gives the surface pictures. We see different type of vegetations. We see mountains, plain, river, all that things. And we go to the field, correlate those things and understand. And we try to project the surface geology, what we see at the surface to the subsurface to understand how the rocks are uh, placed inside the earth. And for the accumulation, like we keep water in a bucket, uh, the, in the subsurface, we cannot keep in a bucket type thing because in the, the liquid is comprised of water, oil, and gas. And they are of different density. The water is the densest. So water, when there is a gravitational settling, the water will remain at the bottom, gas at the top, and in between will be the oil. So they, whenever we drill a, like a tube well we drill, if we get a water bearing zone, the water goes to the surface. And this is because they are at higher pressure than the surface. They try to come out to the surface. Same is the case of the oil and gas also. Whenever the oil and gas are generated in the subsurface, and the, the oil and gas are basically the, <clears throat> the ancient organisms, microorganisms. When the microorganisms are uh, during uh, flooding and, uh, uh, and river when reaching to, reaching to the sea, it is forming delta. Layer after layer of the rocks are getting deposited. So with millions of years, we see thick volume of the rocks are deposited in a basin. So whenever we go from the surface downward, we see increase of the temperature as well as pressure. Pressure is because of the weight of the rocks. And uh, the temperature we call geothermal uh, temperature means the earth is earth core is very hot. It is always emitting temperature from the earth core to the, toward the surface. Temperature is coming from the core of the earth to the surface of the earth, to, to, to the crustal. We divide the earth into three layers, concentric layers. Inner is the core, then mantle, then the crust. Actually, uh, the, the crust is uh, ranging from say uh, 10 to 12 kilometer up to 75 kilometer, like in our Himalayas, our crustal thickness is more because Himalayas is formed there. So, uh, so there are many processes, they form depression in the earth crust. We, we call them plate tectonic concept. The earth is composed of several plates. They are always moving, controlled by the mental convection currents. Their molten materials, they are uh, traveling always. So they carry the cross overlying them. And whenever the two crust meet each other, then they collide. When they collide, one plate goes down, depending on the density, the denser plate goes down and the lighter plate goes off and their mountains are formed. Like our Himalayas, Himalayas is formed, the Indian plate was moving toward the north and there is the Eurasian plate was sitting in the north. So when they met, there was a sea called Tethys Sea earlier. The teth, when the Indian plate moved toward the north, it collided with the Eurasian plate. And the teth is the, the lot of sediments were getting deposited. So due to when you press two things towards each other and there is a soft material, 
and they will be uplifted. So Himalayas was uplifted like that. So when the Himalayas was uplifted, then there is a low area in front of the Himalayas. We call, like in India, Gangetic Plain, Ganga Basin, we call it. So whenever there is rain, you know, rivers are coming down from the Himalayas to the lower areas. So they are carrying out all the rock sediment from the hill to the Ganges Basin. And they are forming a basin. So there are different types of basins. Like in our East Coast, we call them passive, passive basin. They, there, that means the tectonic activity has reduced significantly. So we call their passive margin basis, basins. We have got East Coast passive margin basins, West Coast passive margin basin. East Coast passive basin, basin comprise of Kaveri basin, Krishna Gavdar basin, Mohanadi basin, and Bengal basin. If we go to the south, uh, western side, we have got the Kerala basins, Bombay offshore basin, then Kambay basin, Kutch basins. And there are also basins within the country. They are uh, within a, we call it a solid mass, we call craton. Within the craton, there are basins. Like a, 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 you see the cane is producing from the Rajasthan basin. It is intra-cratonic basins. So there are different type of basins. The sediments were deposited and during deposition, there are organic material, they grow in the water. And uh, with the change of the environment, they die. They are deposited along with the sediments like sand, sand, all that. So whenever we go towards the uh, downward from the surface, the temperature and pressure rise. When the temperature pressure rise, the organic material, they are cooked. So at particular temperature and pressure condition, they release oil. Organic matter, microorganism, they release uh, oily materials. So when they are released as a bubble, small, 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 small bubbles, and there is always, you see, whenever the sediments are deposited in water, part of the water is entrapped within the sediments. And so whenever the oil is generated, the, 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 they are sitting above the water within the small, small pores developed between small, small particles, rock particles. So uh, whenever you have got a lighter material floating on the water and they are at higher pressure, they will try to come out to the lower pressure area. Like our heat, if you have got a iron road putting one side in the fire and other side you are holding, the temperature is gradually pass on to the hand. It will come, it will migrate the temperature. Similar way, when there is pressure differential, High pre from high pressure to low pressure substance will try to move, especially oil and gas and water. So as I told you, the oil, gas and water, they are under gravitational settling. Water remains at the bottom, oil in the middle and gas at the top. So they are at higher pressure and temperature uh, region. So they will try to come out to the lower pressure area, lower pressure area means toward the surface. And for them to accumulate somewhere, we want a trough. Like for rat, we make a trough and catch them. Similar way in the earth crust, troughs are formed. How the, the troughs are formed? I told you the plate tectonic concept. The plates are moving always. There is a seismic activity taking place. So, Whenever the one plate is moving over the another, there's a lot of compressional energy takes place. Or whenever two plates, they, they go away from each other, extensional, extensional force is become dominant. So these compressional force and the extensional, extensional force, sometimes there is a sliding past. We call it a strike slip fault. They move towards away from each other. So these type of forces, they create different type of structure in the sedimentary rocks. And uh, they form a trough. And uh, also there are two types of rocks. One rock where the oil gas, they can migrate. Another rock where they cannot migrate. 
So those who cannot uh, allow the oil and gas to migrate, we call them seal. And uh, the rock which allow them to try uh, migrate, we call them reservoir. So when they are in a very good position, like inverted uh, plate, if you make the inverted plate like this, oil and gas are coming there, and reservoir layer is uh, overlain by a seal, so the accumulation will take place there. So this is how the oil and gas are accumulated. Now uh, I come back to my original, how we locate them. Once uh, uh, we go to a basin, we study the, whether these all ingredients are there or not. There is source rock, reservoir rock, and uh, tectonic form formation of structure, which make the trough. All these things initially we collect from the surface samples or from the gravity magnetic survey or from the seismic data. Then we understand how the subsurface is located. What is the subsurface structural configurations where there is possibility of the oil and gas to be present. And sometimes uh, you see we, they do not get trapped. So they come to the surface. When they come to the surface, during rainy season, you've seen they are expressed in the surface during rain, there is bubbling of the gas someplace. If you go to the Delta area, like Krishna Gadavari, Kaveri Delta, or West Bengal Delta, uh, during rainy season, or when people are drilling small dog well, they find gas and they're uh, smoking, immediately fire, fire fire burn the area and all that things. So uh, actually we have got two types of gas. One is the biogenic gas. We call gobar gas, we call the biogenic gas. Another is thermogenic gas. Those gas which come from the depot depth, they are thermogenic. Thermogenic, they have formed under higher temperature pressure. They have got higher calorific value. Those which are formed at the surface biogenic gas, they have lower calorific value. So now uh, uh, we have to find out from the, uh, we call a reconnaissance survey. Reconnaissance survey, we call that. So we geologists mainly, the, the, the geologist, the science of the earth. So the geologists study this. And uh, uh, these all the parameters I told you, there is a presence of organic matter, presence of seal, presence of reservoir, presence of uh, uh, trough, and, uh, uh, and the timing when the trough were formed. So we see uh, when the oil or gas was generated, Bishab is the timing of forming of the trough. If the oil is migrating, there is no structure, it will not accumulate. If there is, while traveling, if there is a trough, it will be accumulated. So all these features we study first, then if we are satisfied, yes, there is likelihood of presence of oil and gas in the subsurface, then uh, everything is under government, entire basins, although surface right is with the people, but the subsurface right is with the government. So government go for, uh, initially there was no competitive bidding, uh, uh, two companies were there, national oil companies, ONGC and Oil India Limited. So government of India was giving them, you explore this block basin, you explore that basin. But uh, you know, this oil and gas industry is a high, uh, is a cost expense, is, is a, a, a very high cost and high risk business. So, government of uh, India cannot afford everything because there is a lot of risk if you are dealing a well with the $10 million uh, in the ground, uh, uh, or if you go to the deep water, shallow water, 20 to 25 million US dollar. If you go to deep water, it will be more than $50 million. If you do not get anything, entire cost gone. So you require a very, very deep pocket as well as uh, risk uh, taking ability, then you can enter into the 
exploration business. Now, before coming to detail into exploration business, I will say this uh, business, oil and gas business is divided into three sectors. One is the upstream sector, and then is the mid, mid, midstream sector and downstream sector. Uh, the main purpose of upstream sector is to explore and produce oil and gas. And midstream se sector role is, like, this is the ONGC, you can take example. Midstream is the company that transfer the oil and gas produced from the field to the refining, refinery. And uh, like example, you can say Gale India. They are the trans transporter. Uh, and then the refiner. Refiner is the downstream sector. They refine the oil, crude oil, uh, to bring it to a, a shape that will be used by the industry or people for their car and aeroplane, all that things. Uh, <clears throat> so my job was only in the upstream uh, for the exploration, development, and production of the oil and gas. Uh, and now I explain you how we do the business. And uh, this is the preliminary I stage told you. Now the, uh, the basin is divided into several sectors. Dep sector geographically government divides that. Then they, they assign through competitive bidding now in India and in other country also. Uh, you have to bid with the certain terms and conditions given by the government. Uh, we'll, I'll come back to you later. Uh, we call production sharing agreement or production sharing contract. There, uh, the the L1 bidder is assigned the blocks like that, and uh, there are it has come a long way throughout the world uh, from the national giving everything to national company, then gradually giving to the company private companies always as well as foreign uh, foreign companies. Uh, as you know. The, uh, the world is not evenly distributed with the oil and gas. So some places, some part of the world are full of oil and gas, where other part there is no, like you say, Middle East, Africa, uh, Russia, and uh, Gulf of Mexico, North Sea, there are a lot of oil and gas. And uh, in India, uh, we have not done much exploration we have dominantly considered into six basin. We have got around 20, uh, more than 25 basin in India. Our exploration has not spread to other basins. And uh, <clears throat> so there, it, there is a lot of potential in India, but yeah, I told you it's a deep pocket business, high risk taking business. So uh, uh, government of India then started giving the blocks to the outside, to the private company in India, several companies like Reliance, they come up and Vedanto, you know, Cairn India, like this. And many outside companies, also BP, you know, British Petroleum, Exxon, Mobil, they are different. Actually, they are multinational company with deep pockets and a risk taking uh, ability. And, and so these multinational companies do, they go to the place, where there is a lot of oil and gas, likely chance to, for discovery, and they will get back their money and political situation also. There are other many things to uh, uh, are taken into consideration while selecting to go for a place for exploration and production, because this business is not for two years or three years. If you are discovering, then the production will go from 20 to 40, 50 years also. So, the political stability is very important and the terms of condition of the production sharing is very important, uh, uh, all this. And uh, uh, how to reduce the risk in that country, like geopolitical issues, all that, everything they consider and uh, <clears throat> then they move to different countries. And uh, India, now India also through NGC and all India, they have gone to Russia, they have gone, gone to Southeast Asia. They have gone to Brazil. Uh, because you do not have much oil and gas to produce your, you have to secure your uh, energy need by acquiring blocks outside India, producing asset, so that you can bring them to your country. 
even if you are selling them, that price the dollar you can use to import oil from your nearby country. Uh, and now this is the beginning of that. Then uh, whenever block is assigned, then detail, uh, suppose I'm given a, a 2000 square kilometer area in a basin. Uh, and uh, since uh, uh, it is a high risk business company, they want to reduce the risk. How they reduce the risk? Risk by risk sharing. They do not take 100% of the equity of a block. They combine two, three companies, the company, if you see the multinational oil company, they will not keep more than 30%, maybe go to maximum 35%. If they are forced to keep, they may go up to 45 like this. But in future, when they discover, they will divest that part. They will not go more than 30. Uh, I would like to thank you for the excellent start to this interview. And continuing our conversation, I would like to ask you first that what has been your biggest motivation throughout your professional life? Okay, my greatest motivation was to find oil and gas in different geological environment. As I told you, I've worked in different countries. I've worked in North Sea, I've worked in the Gulf of Mexico, I've worked in Western Africa, Nigeria, and the other part. I've worked in Eastern Africa, Tanzania, Mozambique, and I've worked in Australia, Western Australia basins work in Indian basins. So I have got a lot of experience working with a multicultural team. And uh, my luck uh, was very good because wherever I went, I got very good mentors, especially uh, the, 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 uh, the foreigners. If they, uh, when they recognize me, my talent, they always come forward to give me opportunity to grow. So I got, uh, within very short period, I got to work in different basins, which is very difficult usually. If somebody wants to work in a basin throughout life also, he cannot complete that basin. So this gave me a very, very big foundation for all exploration and my interest actually aroused from there, how to discover in different geological uh, scenario. Uh, you see, if you industry, if you see the chance of success of finding oil is uh, uh, around 20 to 25 percent. My chance of success, I'll tell you, whenever I become the leader, the chance uh, it is more than 50 percent. So this is the motivation. Wherever I went, I discovered uh, and uh, companies were very happy and uh, I was compensated very well in terms of uh, options, share options and uh, promotions and all that. And uh, that was the great uh, motivation for my. Okay, so uh, moving ahead, Dr. Sahu, you have been honored with several awards. Which of yeah. them do you regard as your biggest achievement so far and why? Actually, our big or small, I always take them in equal level. And they, they are recognition for the good works. So I told you uh, my more main uh, motivation was finding oil and gas. Actually, all the hours are given based on the discovery. So the discovery may be small discovery or mid-sized discovery, large discovery, there as well as uh, recognition. Especially in the ONGC, National Oil Company, there is a award things. Where in private company, if you go the hour is in terms of the money or, or the promotions. So, so the uh, if for your question, my greatest motivation to find oil and gas in contrasting geological terrain. All right. Okay. Uh, so moving ahead, uh, our viewers would like to know, as someone expanding his work purview with expertise on corporate governance. What values do you bring to the table? Uh, uh, as uh, you know, uh, corporate governance is the disclosure and transparency. If you do the business, in, as I'll take you to the oil and gas business. There is always a production sharing agreement signed between the host government and the company. And the, all the terms, condition are written there like our company laws, different provisions are there to manage the company, all that. 
So our Bible for the oil and gas exploration is the production salary contract. So you have to disclose everything. What of the new data you have uh, acquired in the area? What is your new understanding? What, how you are going to make your work program there? Everything you have to disclose to the government, explain them. And uh, you have to uh, make a very, very good team. Expertise, multidisciplinary multi expertise. Uh, so, if I ask for your questions, if I want to come to a company, how I can improve the governance of that? First thing I will see the whether the board is diversified or not, how much skill the board has got, and how they interact with each other, each other and how they take the company objective, mission uh, and vision, whether they take it seriously or not, how they go with their, uh, the management levels, uh, all the things and how uh, the, for any business, your finance is very, very important. What are the internal control system you have got that? And uh, 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 whether the people engaged are really honest, hardworking and uh, how they interact with each other. And there should not be any, uh, uh, the, 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 the communication should be very good. Uh, I, am a, I, am a, I am a very senior guy. I'll not talk to junior guy. No, the, the things comes from the new generations. You have to allow them to give their views. And it is up to you, you have to take the decision. But taking decision, ego should not come into that. You, you consider the pros and cons. Even if he is a junior guy, he has brain in it. He has studied, he has at least theoretical knowledge he has got, may not have much practical knowledge, but he is giving an idea means I have to think of her and understand what is its implication towards achieving my a vision or mission. I have to, uh, study that thing and uh, and and uh, if it's good there will be brainstorming among the directors uh, with the experts if it is fitting towards taking me to my mission or vision then i will implement that and uh, another uh, another thing is that uh, now the uh, esg you know that environment, social, and the governance. This, how the company's footing is on this. Because you require funding to scale up your business. And uh, that um, the investment will come from the equity, private equity, or venture capital. They are, you know, from the developed country, America, European, all that. Now, they have embedded the ESG in their business. If a company is having a very good ESG record, then they will go to invest that. Because the ESG uh, 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 provide two things. One is the risk and opportunity. And that also is linked with the long-term sustenance of a business. So uh, all these aspects, I need to see that. And I have to give a very objective and perspective view of the business, how the competitors are doing and what is my footing and what is my strength, weakness, and all these things. All right. Very rightly said, uh, Dr. Sahu. So my next question is on technology, since it's an integral part of our lives now. What are some of the most remarkable changes you have seen in your field with changes in technology? And what changes do you expect to see with the advent of IoT, AI, ML, blockchain, Web 3.0, big data? Okay. The evolution of the IT industry has tremendously boosted the oil and gas industry. In, in, in terms of uh, saving time, you know, time, time is money. Uh, I will give the example. Uh, uh, if you are drilling a well in the deep water, I told you earlier, daily cost uh, will be three, uh, the minimum three lakh 
dollar daily. If you delay one six hours, you you are living. Uh, you are one fourth of that. You are losing. So decisions are very fast, and so there is always now because of IT evolution uh, development, we are able to get the real time data from the operational side to the main office. So will not allow uh, the operation to stand by for our decisions. So we get real time decision uh, and immediately implement that. So we save indirectly the cost and uh, cost. And second thing is, uh, as I told you the seismic survey, who earlier uh, we were able to take data up to th three kilometer, four kilometer only. Now, because of the evolution of the IT, we are able to acquire around say 100 kilometer per day. So we are uh, we are getting the data in a very short period, and the data is very large size in terabyte mode. And uh, earlier, uh, one suppose the site is 200 kilometer away, and you are sitting in the office, and you cannot get the data directly. You have to take a hard drive. Somebody will carry it, and uh, and uh, now what has happened, the IT re revolution has, made, uh, has reduced that time. So we are now able to send the data directly from the field to the office. So we are saving that time. And another thing is the when we process data, it requires a lot of comp computer time, a lot of memory. Now that uh, problem is not there. So we are able to, uh, uh, earlier the processing was taking uh, say six months. Now we are able to do it in one month. So uh, with that means we are getting more time to analyze the data and able to take right decision. The processing time and interpretation time has drastically reduced. So we are spending a lot of time for the analysis, taking decision where to drill and how to execute that things. For execution, I gave you the example, we get the data from the drill site uh, directly. So decision making has been very fast. Indirectly, we are saving a lot of money for the company. All right, that was so insightful of you, Mr. Sahu. So that brings us to the last question of the session. And here it goes. We are building a community of industry magnets. The move is meant for cross-pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge-sharing community of corporate giants and industry experts. So what are your thoughts about these initiatives taken by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Hevel Mehta, and the whole team of World Development Corporation? It is, uh, I was not knowing earlier, uh, Recently, I came to know that, and it is a really, really very good uh, thing they are doing that. And uh, mix bringing the export in different fields and making a pool of them uh, is a really good thing. And it will help the industry a lot. It will help okay. industry a lot because they have got expertise in different field. And uh, for a board, you require expertise of different discipline so that you take an informed decision and which will be always good for the company. Great, great. It was fantastic conversing with you and I'm confident that your insights will inspire the future leaders. Thank you, Dr. Jogendranath Sau for joining us today. Wish you the best for your future endeavors. Moreover, Trust that this initiative by Directors Institute has unquestionably expanded the participants' understanding and enriched their minds. Thank you very much. <laughs>